welcome, Giant Nation! It is happy Valentine's Day to you all. I am so excited, as you can tell. Chai Potty Mom asked me what we were doing for Valentine's Day. I said, well, nothing says quite I love you like a chicken cocky roll. <laughs> hey, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. We are indeed making chicken cocky rolls. Um, so let's jump into it, and I'll tell you about the cocky roll and what it is as we're cooking along. One more slip of this chai. Um, chai Potty Mom and I have been off the caffeine for a what? Three weeks Too now? long. Too long. And this first cup of chai is tasting... No one I'm so excited. Heaven. It's tasting like heaven. Mm. Ah. Oh. Mm. Ah. All right. So what is a chicken cocky roll? What it sounds like. Um, shredded tandoori style chicken wrapped in a paratha that's been egg washed and then garnished with uh, onions that have been um, macerated in lime and chaat masala with uh, some fresh herbs, mint, um, cilantro, and it's just rolled up like a little like almost like an Indian taco. And what makes it particularly luscious is the egg wash. Not a wash even, really. It's really like a skinny little omelet, like a masala omelet, almost cooked under the base of the parata. And it just gives this wonderful mouthfeel. So let's do the chicken first, okay? Um, my chicken of choice is chicken thighs, because it's juicy, um, fatty, and that's what you want. Like, and it just falls apart perfectly when you cook it. Chicken breast would just be too dry. You want really sort of good. And like normally, this would be sort of leftover uh, tandoori chicken that that's sort of cooked in a little bit of a gravy, so it still has a little smokiness, but we're just gonna go ahead and add the masala to this. Would just be the same process if you're using a different protein, like paneer? Um, yes, it would be a similar process. The masala would be the same, exactly. You know, there's paneer kati rolls, there's lamb kati rolls, there's chicken kati rolls, but chicken, that's the one. That's the one. That's the one, that gives you the best flavor. Okay, so I've got three thighs of chicken, boneless, skinless. And, but you know, I left all the little fatty bits on because you want that fattiness in cooking. This is ginger garlic paste. You guys have heard me talk on and on and on and on and on about ginger garlic paste, so I'll look it up. But here's ginger garlic paste. I'm going to put in, you know, a healthy teaspoon plus. <laughs> teaspoon plus. Wait, wait, wait. I That's a tablespoon. Show, show us that spoon. Okay, it's a spoon. A spoon. <laughs> yeah, I don't care what you call it. It's a spoon. This is a spoon. street, like not a street snack, but sort of like a, you know, rough and ready. Like, you know, yeah, cart side snacks. So don't get too hung up on what Measurements. Spoon is. Measurements. You know, the simple details. Whatever like spoon you want to use. Get your, exactly. Don't worry about all these things. Okay, so let's get a little salt on the sucker. All right. A little bit of black pepper, because why not? Just a touch. I don't know. I like black pepper. I put it in everything, even Indian food. I mean, Indian food has black pepper in it often, but... Somebody's saying that's actually two tablespoons. Just what? to clarify, just, just to clarify. Okay. And now let's add a little bit of flavor, right? We want to give this all of a tandoori flavor. So, the best way to do this is to get, of course, spice while it's spice tandoori wala. masala. <laughs> Boom. Boom. But if you don't have spice while tandoori masala, um, here's I'll tell you how to do it with just regular spices. So, uh, turmeric, just get a little teeny, teeny, teeny pinch in there. Yeah, just a little dusting, right? Just for a little baseline flavor. Um, some garam masala. That's your, which one are you using here? This is your diaspora turmeric. Diaspora turmeric. Right. Same thing with the garam masala. I'm saying about a half a teaspoon. And again, this is because I'm only doing about three chicken thighs, so I'm not going too crazy heavy on anything over here. And Kashmiri chili powder. Um, and this, I'm gonna put a teaspoon because you really want a nice, rich, and spicy chicken. Uh, that when I say rich means the, the color of the Kashmir chili powder will come through sort of as being a brighter red, like more of the tandoori color that you want. And also there's a fruitiness to this particular chili that I like a lot. And now we're gonna add da, 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 some oil. Does it just matter keep, what kind? I'm just using grapeseed oil, um, you know, expeller, expressed, organic, in a fancy French looking tin, because we're like that only. <laughs> And Hardly. Uh, I'm gonna put in some lime juice. Mm, 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 mm. Squeeze that lime. Give it a nice roll to help loosen up juice on the inside, especially if you've got an old funky one like I do. And let's get all that juice inside. There we go. That is a delicious. juicy lime. That is a juicy lime. And a little extra something, something. I'm just like a splash of vinegar. Um, here we go. A splash of vinegar just to give it a little extra zing, just a zing. The lime's got zing, there we go, just a touch. Vinegar's got zing, all right? Are you using, now, was that rice wine? Does it yeah, matter? I, I grabbed whatever I had I saw first, rice wine vinegar, distilled vinegar. You obviously don't want to use balsamic or red wine vinegar, or white vinegar. Okay, and now, massage. 
get all that masala in there. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe we didn't eat quite that much ginger garlic paste, but you know. We like it ginger. I like it gingery and garlicky. Okay, see that beautiful red color? Now, ideally, I would put this aside for, ooh, at least maybe an hour, you know, just to really get that marinade into the chicken. Um, you don't need this to marinate overnight or anything like that. You know, two, three, four hours, it'll be even tender and juicier. Much longer than six hours, you know, that lime juice and vinegar will start to make the chicken mushy. We don't want that. Um, and that's really it. But since we don't have an hour to marinate this thing, our chai pani mom will... <laughs> we need our kitchen back. We have cupcakes to ice. It's Valentine's Day. Uh, uh, like a fancy dinner tonight. Yes, my husband is cooking for dinner. his girls tonight. All right. So we're going to put this down on a little baking sheet here. A little wax paper is fine. No need to oil the wax paper. Wax paper, parchment paper. Parchment paper, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no need to oil it because um, there's already some oil in this over here. And... There we go. Put and these are down. just boneless breasts, right? Uh, no, a thigh. Oh, thigh, a boneless, right? Boneless thigh meat, boneless skinless thigh meat, right? Get all that nice marinated directly on there. Sorry, there's dog commotion in the background. Oh, I know, Teddy and Rosie are getting yeah. it on. Teddy's a teenager now, That's for those of you. Extra little pinch of salt. Just those to make of you sure paying attention. Well. Fish is in the house. Hey, hey fish. fish. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Hi, everyone. All right, we are done. Bowl out of the way. This in the oven. Surgery is complete. Clear. Next. I have Let's a question. Make, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is an interesting one. Um, what's the difference between a street food Mumbai Frankie and a Kati roll? That is a very good question. That is being hotly debated, and I've actually been looking it up, and I really can't figure it out. Um, I think the Kati roll was probably, you know, most likely originated in Calcutta. Uh, it's been attributed mostly to Nizams. So again, if, you know, who knows these things for sure, but that seems to be at least the legend, is that Nizams, this famous place in uh, Calcutta, or Kolkata now, came up with the Kati roll. And it probably was a way to just like, you know, make a quick street snack. And, uh, you know, some, some probably inventive cook um, decided to take some chicken that was probably left over, shredded it, put a little extra masala in there, made it sort of a little bit more wet and juicy. And the genius idea, well, there goes <laughs> the genius idea in my mind was that egg sort of on the inside of the paratha, so that beautiful, flaky, crispy, oily paratha with the egg on the inside. It just gave this mouthfeel us to die for. A Frankie, I'm fairly certain, probably originated without the egg part, and that probably originated in Mumbai, separate from Calcutta. I know, the dog sound. <laughs> It's them playing. Trust me, no animals are being hurt in the making of this video. The dogs are just playing. <laughs> That's Rosie telling Teddy how Back to go. Back off, <laughs> yeah. So, um, and the Bombay, the Frankie probably originated in Bombay, probably the same idea, came together. It's really hard to tell I've had Frankies with egg in it. So, yeah. I well, guess, of course, unsurprisingly, um, Vish I knows the answer. <laughs> Vish is our, uh, we Google Vish when we need the answer to... Indian food questions. Um, kati roll came first, is what he's saying. Uh, oh, I'm positive the kati roll came first. I mean, the Frankie had to be a more sort of metropolitan much later. I mean, I think Nizam has been around since the 30s, so yeah. Okay. Okay, let's do the egg for the, uh, for the uh, oh my God, what Jeez. are they doing back there? Well, they've been trapped inside on this rainy day, uh, so they're true. losing it. Wait, be right. before you do the egg, someone's asking, didn't we, we have the kati roll at, at Chaipani and Decatur, right? Um, it, yes, we do. It comes and goes. I don't know if it's on right now. The pandemic. Things are, we have slightly different menus right now because yeah. of the pandemic, but, but check back in with us when things get reopened with our normal menu. Okay. Two eggs. Ah, Jonah Nordine. Hi, Jonah. Okay, so what are you doing here? Are you making an egg wash? So making, it's not an egg wash. It's actually almost like a, an omelet that I'm going to be using to coat one side of the paratha with. So give it a nice little whisk. And we want to season this egg a little bit too, right? So, I mean, you know, for this rough and ready kind of street food, we're not trying to get super fancy refined. I know you're not supposed to put salt in when you whisk your eggs because the salt pulls the water out and they get watery, whatever. We're not getting technical. Yeah, we're putting a little salt We're just salt having in. fun. Now, a little hint of pepper. And I'm going to put a little masala. And instead of doing the whole, you know, the whole triptych again of turmeric and chili powder and whatnot, I'm just going to go ahead and put in a little bit of a what tandoori. Is this? The tandoori uh, masala. Okay. So, but honestly, if you don't have tandoori masala, pinch of turmeric, pinch of salt, pinch of red chili powder, done. That's all it really needs. So I'm just going to put a little tandoori masala in here because I want that sort of egg to have a little bit of that nice zing 
on the inside, like a masala omelet. Mm. Oh, this is interesting. Someone said that they thought the kati roll was made with a paratha and the frankie was made with a thin chapati. Yeah, quite possibly too also. Maybe it depends on the street vendor that you're Absolutely. getting it from. This is what I love about these Instagram shows. There's so many people on there now. I get to find out we more. We get all the information. We get all the information. I'm um, gonna put a hint of chili powder because I just want to get a nice color in there too. The kashmir chili powder. Okay, let's turn our pans on. And the third component of this whole situation is the paratha. Okay, so what is a paratha? Roti, chapati, paratha, naan, India's legendary for its flatbreads. And the paratha is one of the most delicious ones. Essentially, it's like a flour chapati or roti or, you know, a tortilla, for example, a flour tortilla. Same principle, but layered with oil or ghee or butter in this case. And kind of like a croissant is layered. You know, um, the paratha is sort of like oil's put in, it's folded over, roll out again, folded over, roll out. And there's three or four different ways to make it, but the end result is a beautiful, flaky, crispy uh, flatbread, you know, Indian uh, paratha. And uh, there's many, many variations on them. You can stuff them. So I'm not going to make that right now. This dish could also be made, but somebody said, with a plain roti, or if you don't even have that, if you have just plain, nice, uh, um, you know, flour tortillas, it'll work too. It's the same idea. The flavor's coming as much from the meat and from the egg and from the uh, onions and cilantro as it is from the bread on the outside. Just having the paratha just takes it to the next level, makes it super authentic. And so also, I, like, also a little more indulgent. And of course, way more indulgent. Because it's layered with all of that so fat I in between the layers. So I have paratha. Uh, most Indian-style grocery stores, if you're in a metro area and you have a Patel Brothers or a Cherry Ann's or a Grace, you can probably buy these on, uh, online frozen too. Um, and the brand that I like is Kawan. K-A-W-N, that's the brand of frozen paratha. Um, basically, K-A-W-A-N. Uh, Kawan, exactly. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in a pan. Vish is giving us our um, language lesson. He says kati is Bengali for stick. Well, yeah, that's right. That's, the, I mean, so the, um, uh, the implication being that the chicken was on a skewer and cooked on a skewer, sort of in the, on a ciggy. Right. Those flavors and then pulled off and put into the roll. But the version that I have all the time the chicken shredded, probably to make it feel, fit inside easier so the chunks of it are not falling out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you don't, it's not really on a stick when it's served as a kati roll. You know, the chicken obviously didn't come off a stick, but that's probably where it originated from. It was gotcha. Off a stick. Okay, so. Oh, also Hindi too, he's, somebody's saying. Yeah. Um, hey, so somebody's asking, what temperature do you have this at? Um, I, the, the pans, they're yeah. just on high. Okay, and uh, what about the now, chicken? Um, oh, the chicken's in, I had it in the oven at, um, little bit. I put it at like 450. Okay. I just cranked it to maximum. I got a convection oven because I'm trying to cook this thing in 20 minutes so that the show doesn't take forever. Hopefully we have cooked chicken and not raw chicken by the time it's done. So this is ready. My paratas are in there cooking. And what we're going to do is kind of get it sort of like semi-cooked on both sides and then put the egg down, put the parata down on, the, on top of that and then finish cooking the other side. You'll see exactly how it's done. Um, all right guys. We're moving along, making good speed. Time for another. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do some uh, knife work while we're waiting. So let's figure out what's going on the inside. Onions, um, white, red, pick whatever you have in the house is fine. We've got both. For some reason, I feel like going with the white onion. Man, this dish. It, the funny thing is, it's a surprisingly. There's not that many places that do kati rolls, you know, and the ones that do them, there's not that many that do them great, but when they are great, they're incredible. It's, I think people get lazy with this and they make it too greasy sometimes, mm -hmm. or just all over the place with flavor, like just not really bright and sharp with the flavors. And it's easy to have a bad kati roll and just think that it's really a greasy, soggy mess. So when it's done perfectly, mm. It's heaven. This mm. is one of my Excellent. absolute favorite dishes at Chaipani. Okay. So this has a light, see the little light toasting on that side. I got two pans going because I want to make a demo. Is this what I'm having for dinner? Um, no, I'm making special dinner for you. Oh, very exciting. Right. And we're just gonna really thin julienne and onion. Super thin, right? Because we want it to absorb all that. There we go. We want it to absorb all that. Um, we get a bowl. Lime juice and chaat masala. What fancy knives and aprons are you referring to, Vish? A spice wallet apron? 
It's fancy. We He's talking get, about vicious fancy. I mean, vicious talking about your fancy knife. Honey. We need to get vicious. We need to get vicious special apron. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. He doesn't already have one. Yeah, he He's like your your cohort in this. All and right. the cutting board, yes, this cutting board. We did. Oh, I know, Vish. I kept meaning to For get all that of you. those people that have been asking about this cutting board, we did talk to the woodworker that made this, and he's happy to make them for people. I don't know what it would cost. It depends on the size. But if you, okay. you can uh, direct message um, at Marijuani Ronnie, right? Yeah. Okay, and he'll connect you. Right. So I pulled the, um, I pulled the uh, parata off, and it's sort of half done, as you can see. It's still pliable. A little more cooked on one side, a little less cooked on the other side. That's all perfectly fine. So here's the tricky part. So, a little bit of oil, just a touch, because this is a nonstick pan and you don't need too much, and I highly recommend doing all this in a nonstick pan. Why? Simply because you don't want this thing to get greasy. The parata has got a lot of, um, you know, fat in it already. It's the like, grease like comes out when you cook yeah. it. Yeah, and the grease comes out, so you don't want this thing turning a greasy mess. I'm gonna turn the heat down to medium, because it's probably ripping hot at this point, and let's put some of this egg in there and show you how this bad boy is done. the egg in there, take the parata, and put it right on top of the egg. Mm. Did everybody catch that? Check on your mom? Yep, you we caught it. it. Yep, you got yep, it? Okay. Yep, got it in All the film. Right. See and how the, the egg sort of pushed out to the sides, right? Yeah, the egg pushes out to the side. It's going to cook underneath it. Then we'll flip it over and finish this other side so it gets nice and crispy. And then we put our chicken, we put our um, accoutrements on the inside, and we're good to go. So, so all you had done on that egg was you just whipped it up a little bit with some salt and pepper before you put it down into the pan. Uh, salt and pepper and a little bit of masala. Oh, right. A little bit of, just because you don't have to. If you don't have it and you just want the egg plain, that's fine too. You just want to give the egg a little zing also so that you get this little background flavor without going crazy. You don't want to go heavy on the masala. So, and you see, you got this beautiful fluffy omelet situation on the inside. So I'm going to put stuck to the side here. Let's get rid of that. How did you like being a judge on Chopped? How did Side like question. It? How was that? Oh, it was super fun. I Somebody's mean, asking about oh, what was, that was like. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was so much fun. I mean, just to be on, be on the set, I ran into, ran into some of the VIP chefs out there. They didn't, of course, talk to me because I'm supposed to be a blind judge or actually probably a gag judge. <laughs> <laughs> but it was still fun to see Marcus Samuelson and some of these guys just hanging out over there. And of course, my dear friend Manit Chahan was there. Okay, so we're letting the other side of it cook so they get super nice and flaky and crispy. I'm gonna hit this with some lime juice, mm -mm 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 -mm. some salt, just a pinch, and <laughs> some chopped masala. Vish is being your heckling crowd today. Vish is always heckling. <laughs> and it's a little bit of chopped masala in there. What is chopped masala? Um, it's just this fantastic umami bomb of Indian cuisine, um, used a lot in Indian street food. It's got um, green mango powder uh, and rock salt, along with some other spices. But it's the green mango powder and the rock salt that give the chaat masala its zing, its tanginess, and its funkiness. So it's almost like, you know, it's almost like, what, it's the same effect that fish sauce has. It smells kind of weird and out there, and possibly even off-putting, but then the minute you put it in food, now I love Heaven. the smell of it, and also love the smell of fish sauce, so. So there you go. There you go. All right, guys, this one is almost done. And you don't want it to get too crispy because you want it to still stay pliable, you know, so that way when you roll it, the it's not cracking and breaking. But I'll turn it up to high for a second here and pull this one off in a second. Vish is worried that you had to chop Manit on Chopped. I don't think he got to know who he was chopping because he was a blind That's judge. Problem. I was a blind judge. <laughs> yeah, are, are you kidding? Otherwise, it would have been terrified. I would have been terrified. <laughs> Okay. She's one of his one favorite side. people. He can't chop her. Over there. Let's get another one going. Let's watch and how you did the this. Down. There. So that's got the um, it's got the uh, what you call it, chopped masala, salt, and the um, lemon, lemon, lime, lime, and onions. I'm gonna put in a couple of thinly sliced green chilies, very, 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 very thinly sliced green chilies. Just again, to give it a little herbaceousness and make it all what you call it. And then mix in some fresh cilantro. And we're gonna chop up some leaves over here too. Just make it like a little cigar out of these guys. When does this episode on Chopped 
coming out. Did it already happen? I think it already happened, and I'm not even sure if I made the final cut or not, honestly. I haven't haven't chased it down to see what happened or not. But what definitely is happening on the 25th, you want to tell everybody, honey? You tell them. This is super exciting. (laughs) Ah, For those of you watching, if you have Discovery Plus streaming, you know, Discovery Plus where Food Network and HGTV and all the Discovery channels are on Nat Geo or whatever, if you have Discovery Plus streaming on the 25th... Is that different from Discovery Plus? What's the difference? There's Discovery Plus. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Discovery Plus. Whether you get it on your Apple TV or whether your computer or whatever. But um, um, Ludacris, the Ludacris, rapper, movie star, etc., etc., and I filmed a pilot episode called Luda Can't Cook, where Ludacris, who really can't cook, <laughs> is, learns how to cook Indian cuisine, and, and I school. am the Jedi Master to his young Padawan, <laughs> or the Mr. Miyagi, if you will. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> to his young Daniel son, to a young Luda son. But yeah, the, it's. He had a blast. Ridiculously hilarious. Ludacris is funny as hell. Luda and the Shaggy Chef is what Vish it's thinks exactly it should be called. What, exactly what it is. All <laughs> That's right, really guys. funny, Vish. Um, let's see how our chicken is doing. That's the last thing we're waiting for. Lost your chili. Oh, my God. Did okay. you get all of it? Teddy's going to eat that in a split second. Nah, okay. he'll be fine. Let's uh, mix up these onions. Let's use, here we go, the spoon to mix them up. Anything we drop on the floor, our puppy will eat in a split second. So this has got the onions, the cilantro. Oh yeah, can you smell that chopped masala? It's just got that nice, beautiful funk. And we'll be ready to assemble in two minutes. Thank you for clarifying, Jess. So this is what these look like over here. The parathas with the egg on them. Yeah, parathas with the egg on them. And timing is everything. I mean, these things are made fresh, served fresh. But if they sit around for a minute or two, it's not a big deal. Ideally, your chicken would already be ready. And under normal circumstances, I would have pre-made the chicken so I could, you know, just assemble it. But kind of like that's all there really is to do is the chicken and the egg part and then this part. So I wanted to show you guys how I marinated the chicken, how I cooked it, my definition of a spoon uh, so that there can be public debate about that. And um, <laughs> um, and the chicken should be done. What hopefully. kind of chutneys? Some people are asking about the chutneys that go on this. Ah, so... I personally am a purist with this particular thing. There's so much going on with the uh, tandoori chicken flavor, uh, the onions with the lime juice and the, and, the, and the chopped masala, and just the masala and the egg and the parata. I think chutneys just kind of like can be overkill. Um, you could put green chutney on it, that would be the most recommended one. And green chutney really is just lime juice, cilantro, green chilies, and we kind of have all of that already going. So this is more of like a fresh mouthful that you get when you, when you bite into mm-hmm. the, the kati and keeps it slightly, I, mean, I know it's hard to say clean for a dish that inherently can be a little bit on the greasy side. But this is your interpretation but of a kati roll. Yeah, this is how I want to do a kati roll. I wouldn't want to put any chutneys on it. I haven't had a kati roll from the Zam, so I don't know how they do it. Um, in Chaipani, I believe we do put some green chutney on it. So it's kind of personal preference, if you like it. Now on the flip side, if this gets too spicy for you, Having a little raita on the side, you know. That's how I eat mine, that's, of course. The that's wimp. A, a lot of white Because I'm wimpy. <laughs> yes, that's white people. We're wimpy. Well, no, 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 I wouldn't put it on the inside again, because I think that the raita will just make the whole thing a soggy mess even more so. The water will leak out, and, and, and that's all you'll taste. Yogurt can, you know, really coat your tongue with that fat, and all you taste is just the yogurt. So, you know, enjoy. It's, think of this as a street taco, right? Okay. Straight, right on, you know, like a El Pastor taco. I mean, you got a freshly grilled, you know, masa corn little uh, taco, um, you know, the uh, meat coming off the trompo, a squeeze of lime, and maybe a little chunk of that charred pineapple for acidity. That's all you want. You don't want to drown it with sour cream and salsas and cheese and turn it into this, you know, California Tex-Mex kind of cuisine. So Somebody's um, asking how this is different from the original kati kebab that was on the Chaipani menu. This is this is a different wrap than that so yeah, original streamlined kati, version of it. Yeah, those were the early, early days when we first did the kati kebab, and we kind of did a bastardized version. Version It was done on a roti, not really a brata, if I remember correctly. And, it, you know, it was an early attempt at sort of like trying to make this dish easier on us and more approachable. Um, but something like this with the egg and the parata, I mean, this is OG. This is kind of how you'd want to do it. Only difference is, you know, most places, at least back in the day, would be making them parathas. And so, just even the quality of the parathas from uh, vendor to vendor would be right. kind of like a differentiating factor. Right, and can make or break the dish. And then if somebody doesn't eat eggs, yeah. um, would you just leave that off? Or they're asking, could you use something like a chana atta paste? No, 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 no. You wouldn't leave it off. 
<laughs> and don't, don't want to do eggs. Leave the eggs off. Um, you know, you'll still have a lot of uh, flavor and juiciness from the chicken and the fresh uh, onions and cilantro over there. I mean, I will say the egg is kind of what makes this dish the dish. So there's lots of cool other wraps and rolls and kebab rolls you can do that don't that don't necessarily need need egg. Like our classic kebab roll with the you know the boti kebab or the chicken tikka kebab roll. That's on naan. Mm -hmm. And you know that obviously has no egg in the inside. And your fish roll also is on non, exactly. right? Yeah. Yeah. Fish roll is also so for crispy masala don't eat... fish roll on non. Oh yeah, we should do that. One Let's do days. that. That's one of my favorites. We should do all the crispy masala fish rolls one of these days. Um, well, I guess we're just sitting there yapping, waiting for the chicken. But I think, I think I can pull it. I think I can pull. It. Let me just give it a blast overhead uh, for a final broil for three minutes. We'll drink chai. We'll chat. Ask questions, people. Ask questions. Let's I wish see. we could edit this out when we post it up, because like literally I'm just sitting here waiting now for the chicken to be done. Now's your chance. Everybody mm. can ask you all the questions. Somebody was asking earlier what your favorite knife is to cook with. My favorite what? Knife. 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 Molly's my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> there are many, but she is number one. Always a Be careful what you ask on this live cooking show. <laughs> knife? Knife. Um, different knives for different uses. I mean, here's what's crazy. I actually have, if you want to show them, a knife block over here, right? A knife block over here. Mm -hmm. Coming around here, over there. And then a knife block hidden back over here. We have a secret hidden stash back here. And then He's a little obsessed with his knives. There's more knives in here too. I love knives. I, lo I collect knives. I like collecting high quality knives. Um, you know, but having said that, that's just because, you know, it's like we all need something to fetishize and chefs like fetishizing knives and good kitchen implements. But, um, you know, just a, the number one quality of a good knife is sharpness. If you can find a knife that holds its edge, that you can easily sharpen, that is worth its weight in gold. Um, and I try to find knives, even though I collect knives, the ones that I use over and over again are ones that sharpen well. So I like this one a lot. It's a shun knife. It's a, you know, a Japanese company. This particular design was by Ken Onion. And the reason it looks a little unique is that Ken Onion is an incredible knife designer angled it a little bit so that when you're holding it as a, as a cutting knife, uh, your hand is naturally straight. Whereas a traditional chef's knife, you know, because it's a straight blade, you'd have to turn your wrist down to get the same angle. Um, and here it just takes the strain off for a lot of repetitive cut. Now for a home chef, you don't have to worry about any kind of repetitive, you know, motion injury to your this wrist. This is for our poor chefs that have but to cook, when, when you, when you cook boxes it. of okra. And then the second thing they did is again, well, this one's got a better one than most, but quite often, you know, where the blade transitions to the tang, this is hard edge. And after hours and hours and hours of cutting with these kind of blades, I'd find myself with a thick callus right on the inside of my uh, knuckle over there. So again, what Ken did on this knife, which is beautiful, he essentially, you know, sort of radiused it out so that it's got this beautiful spot for the knuckle to fit perfectly without a hard, hard edge, if you can see it over there. Mm -hmm. So it's really, I mean, I've had this knife for 10 years. It was the first knife I bought after Chaipani's first year and we were successful. I, you know, it's like we barely paid ourselves and I rewarded myself with this knife, which at the time was not cheap. I mean, it's a few hundred bucks. Um, but since then, so that's the one I keep up front because it's a, it's a utility knife. And it's a chef's knife. So obviously it's for large dicing, chopping, you know, like work with, with, you know, fantastic for dicing, chopping. But then you need other knives. You need knives for pairing, knives for small knife work, knives for filleting, boning, um, you know. And then my other favorite knives is you guys, this. you don't know what kind of can of worms you opened with this question. So um, this style knife, also very you know popular with Japanese chefs and Japanese cooks for dicing, cutting, and uh, chopping, a santuko. You know, tick, 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 straight up and down. Um, there's also, oh my God, yeah. I mean, this is just, I love, I love knives. So Vish is worried different. that you're burning the chicken and he wants to know what's for Valentine's Day dinner. Um, <laughs> Basically, okay, stop talking night. about knives. Oh God, here last we go, not is, ending. Yeah, so this is sort of what <laughs> cleaver meets, meets, uh, meets uh, you know, it's incredible how much fine knife work you can do with this. And also at the same time, it's just a heavy cleaver. I think this is a Croatian design. Uh, I love this knife. It's too big to fit anywhere, so it sits yeah. in the drawer. It just takes up space. This thing. Chicken is ready. Okay. How long did you cook it for? People are asking. I cooked it for 20 minutes. Okay. Exactly and approximately. <laughs> All of the Indians in the house will appreciate that comment. Exactly and approximately 20 minutes. Look at that. Yeah, Look it is a scary knife. It. Look at it. So, um, let's uh, chop it up. Are you not going to say what's for dinner tonight? 
Um, yes, so for dinner, I think we're going to make from our own. It's supposed to be a surprise. It's a surprise. Thanks for asking. Okay. Oh, you don't have to say it if it's I, a surprise. It's a surprise dinner. Okay, so I'll, we'll report back next Saturday what he made me for Perfect. Valentine's. Okay. He's cooking for me, the dogs. There's Teddy. Here's Rosie. So let's and Aria. Guy over here. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I use my... Mm. Oh, the heat. The heat. Mm. 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 Awesome. So good <laughs> what, what? The chicken? The chicken! Oh my god! No. We have, we have dog that. training happening in the background. Okay. So I'm going to slice this up in a thin, like, sort of julienne, almost on the bias, because that's what we're looking for, is like small pieces of chicken here. Mm. It's so juicy, so hot, so spicy, so delicious. It's down the middle. A really nice little chop up, get all those juices mingling together. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, not quite shredded, but you see what I mean, right? Just a really nice, really want those juices, thin. just thin julienne strips. And, you know, I don't want to turn it into mincemeat. We're not making a chicken keema here. But, and then definitely get some of these fantastic pan juices here and do a lot all over. Hey guys. Oh my God, Vicious announcing where you're opening restaurants <laughs> that we're not actually opening. But Greenville is definitely on the list of places okay. to consider. Ready to, ready to assemble. Let's get this chunk over there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Smells get, divine. Let's get a little bit more of that gravy all over it. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my God, my mouth is already watering. I've got to try a little piece. I'm a genius. This is so good. <laughs> okay. And this zingy onions here are gonna cut through the grease because of the chaat masala. And let's do two, right? Let's do one more over here real quick. Slice this one up also real quick. So hot, so hot. People wanna see your chicken keema recipe and your okra fry recipe somebody was asking for before. Okay. I think Teddy's eating chicken. Somebody's saying Teddy's eating chicken. Oh, chicken. it's fine. He'll uh -oh. be fine. He'll survive. Teddy, my man, live it up, buddy. Live it up. Okay. Did you see any chicken, honey? All right. Some more over there. Don't Some worry. We're not going to poison there. our dogs. All right, guys. Let's do this. Clear this out. Thanks, everybody, for waiting for my chicken to finish cooking. Rinse my hands off. Little wipey, wipey. Uh, you don't want me to stay in your towel. Please right? don't. Okay, I'll use a crib towel. Thank you. The perennial battle. Only on turmeric is that. <sighs> okay. And let's see. Second day. There's Rosie trying to figure out what all the fuss is about. And this is it, guys. Just roll up. One down, and look at how flaky that is. Two down, exactly. Show them it's the texture yummy. of that paracha. Looks really yummy. There you have it. Mmm, mmm. Two kati rolls, overflowing the plate. <laughs> One sad piece of cilantro. <laughs> One sad piece of cilantro on top. Now, there you have it, guys. The beautiful kati roll. Simple and yet delicious. The flavor, obviously, is coming from the chicken and the marinade, so follow the instructions for that carefully. Do exactly like I said, precisely and vaguely the way I did it. <laughs> and because I will basically, naturally, be following up to make sure you did it right. So, of course, the flavor is coming from there, but what elevates the whole thing to the next level, transforms it to where the you know, whole is greater than some of the parts, is the paratha with the egg on the inside. And then of course the onions are there just to cut through, um, you know, the uh, fattiness of the chicken. So, should we take a bite? Yes. Let's do this guy over here first. We'll save that one for the photo shoot. Okay. All right, let me move it over here. The whole point is for it to be messy. Mmm. 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 Oh my God. When, how long has it been since you had a kati roll? <laughs> been a while. How long since we had it? Like decent food. We've been on this We've rabbit on food this diet for terrible three weeks. cleanse. Mm. But this apron's definitely fitting better. God, that's remarkable. 
Oh my God, it's just magic. I mean, it's like when you make a perfect hamburger, you know, mm -hmm. a perfect taco, like everything just works so beautifully together. Mm. I'd add a little bit more onions. Don't be afraid to go heavy on the onions. So, add some more because you really wanted to cut through the parata and the flakiness and the chicken and all the flavors in there. All right, guys. Mm. We'll have one more bite. Love it. Love it. Make this one at home. It's so simple. Where can so people delicious. find the recipe? How do I know? <laughs> Spicewallow.com. <laughs> Bad Let's pitch see, man. If nobody's watching, <laughs> make sure this recipe gets up on spicewallow.com. Go over to recipe and tips. Click on it. Scroll down, and you should see this soon. It takes us a few days to get it up there, so probably the middle of the week will be ready. But if you guys saw me do it, this is how simple it really was. And I didn't measure anything because you're going by kind of just intuition. Like, you know, you don't want tablespoons of chili powder. Pinch of chili powder, pinch of this, pinch of that, just to get that beautiful color. And really, if you can get Kashmiri chili powder, doesn't matter if you get it from Spice Oil or not. You find it on Amazon if you don't want to buy it from us. Give it to your local grocery store if you already have it, wonderful. That is what gives it that beautiful color and elevates the dish to the next level. And the same with the chopped masala. How will you get it? Get it. Of course, Spice Oil sells it. But, you know, you, if you're somewhere where you don't want rather go to your local grocery store, that, you know, Indian-style store to see if you can find chopped masala. And the brand, if you're not buying uh, Spice Walla brand, the next best brand out there is probably MDH brand. MDH. All right, guys. Thank you for joining. Any last questions? There's a lot of votes for Kima and the Irani style. Didn't we make Kima? So we it should be up on the, it it could be up on the website, right? Um, I Spice Wallow website. Maybe it didn't make it to the website, but we can certainly do Kima again. We can do like a sloppy jai. Again. They're asking for like Irani cafe style with bread. Awesome. I'll be doing a biryani for the Food Network in a few weeks. Uh, it'll be a takeover for a week of their YouTube channel, and I'll be doing biryani, kebabs, and some other Parsi dishes. Um, might maybe even chicken facha. And uh, where do and, people find that? YouTube um, or Instagram or what? It'll be on uh, Food Network's YouTube channel. Exactly. Okay. And they'll they'll advertise the heck out of it. And don't forget on the twenty fifth. Me and Luda. Luda. It. It's going to be fun. All right. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Thank you for joining. Nothing says quite I love you, like I said, like a beautiful kati roll. <laughs> <laughs> Go make one right now for your loved one. A bouquet of them, if you will. Happy Valentine's Happy Day, Valentine's everybody. Day. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Mm. Let's do one more bite. One more bite.